ever. 5. Testimonials, Questions and Answers. June 13, 2018. Ever greets you. In the silence of my presence, which is nothing other than yours revealed, let us allow ourselves to embrace one another with the same enthusiasm and the same truth, where everything is obvious, where everything is beauty. In every moment, in every time and in every space, as you can see and perhaps already see, we're a multitude to recognize each other, thus fulfilling, as I told you, the oath and the promise. So I come to you and I come into you to rejoice in what you have to say to me, what you have to ask me. So let us open ourselves to each other, in order to embrace in the silence of our hearts, the words and questions of each of our sisters and brothers, in order to commune with the words, the witness and the verb of those who want to express and speak. Then you can start. Question. Hello Eber. Could you specify, when you absorb one or more people, when we should use that element with the three points or the heart? Thank you. Beloved, et animant is, I would say, in general, in its new simplified form, a way to unite the three in one, to live, to say, to feel and to see the truth. Thus, therefore, in the process of embracing and absorbing each other, the etanimant can represent a preliminary element, simply allowing, in the space of two or three breaths and exhalations, to place consciousness naturally, without effort, in the heart of the heart, on the threshold of eternity, where is the most favorable place to love, to commune, to absorb and to verify the truth of one who is the truth of each one, where there is no difference, whatever the appearance, whatever the dimensions. In this is your joy, in this is your truth. Synthony is just a way of affirming its linkage and resonance from heaven to earth, for by bringing together the three in one, you happily and joyfully cross the world of images, the world of archetypes in order to find yourself facing yourself who is nothing other than me, who is nothing other than you. Thus, then, Etanimant unites the three in one, truly and concretely, and places you at the heart of the heart, the most suitable place to live, embrace and transmute the truth. You can continue. Testimony question. Yesterday, I started the 21-hour alignment, 45 minutes before. It was very good. But at 9 o'clock p.m., I started to feel bad, to shake, etc. I wasn't holding my position on my back. Is this a problem to welcome the light? It happens quite often that I am not completely available on these occasions. Thank you. When this kind of event or discomfort occurs, rest assured, you have nothing to do with it, neither responsible, nor guilty, nor involved. It is simply the posture of habits where the mind still sits sometimes, which asks you not to stay, not to align, not to move. Remember, first of all, that there is nothing to expect, nothing to hope for and nothing to observe within the person, the character or the observer. Thus, the very fact of preparing yourself so long before the collective moment only somehow reflects not an impatience, but an uncertainty, not of who you are, but an uncertainty of what still hides you at times. There is no opposition of yourself, as you ask the question, because who could oppose himself in the truth and in the ineffable of love? So there is not strictly speaking a missed appointment, but simply a time that is not in phase. Remember that there is nothing you can do about it from the place where you think you are. All you have to do is disappear, ask for nothing, weigh nothing, anticipate nothing. The alignment you're talking about is not just the alignment of the three in one, it's much more than that. This is unconditional surrender to what is unknown, to what you do not know and that you can only life. So observe yourself in the moments when, precisely, you have this gesture and these movements that prevent you from remaining calm and still. Observe. Observe what your body tells you, observe where movement is born and thought is born, not to oppose it or to what is there, but only, precisely, to allow what is there to pass through, to let what is to be evacuated, simply by observing it. For, I remind you, in these moments, you are neither your thoughts, nor your body, nor what is not lived. There is no better place than the emptiness of the silence of the mind and body. 
As soon as this agitation and this movement are seen, then it ceases by itself, as soon as you do not oppose it, as soon as you do not plague against yourself and maintain the consciousness and intention simply of the truth, without hope and without expectation, this then releasing the present moment to the experience of eternity, without difficulty. Remember also that each of us joins what we are at the most appropriate time. This most appropriate moment is not in time, but only in the tempo of the dance, in its rhythm and movements. Thus, therefore, there are no barriers, there are no veils, there is no disturbance other than that of not being able to be located in this calm for the time being. Most of the time, as I told you, there's a wait. But as you know, waiting creates distance and creates distance from who you are. Thus, therefore, standing still without waiting for anything, will already calm the habits and reflexes of what may remain of the person and, above all, will allow you to see it, because what is seen is obviously crossed. It does not need to be understood or analyzed either, but, indeed, it simply went through, even without seeing anything of it. Once this has passed through, the moment the first signs of acceptance occur in you, namely the difference or decrease, or disappearance of the perceptions of some parts of your body of flesh, will give you the signal that ever is there, in you. You see, it's very simple, there's just to find the moment. This moment, as I repeat, which is not inscribed in time, but simply in space. This means that for a moment, through immobility, it is enough at that moment to cross, letting oneself cross, what makes sail and what obstructs the truth. There is nothing else to do, nothing else to try to understand. In fact, there is nothing to take, because that moment is the moment when you give yourself, with ease. However, as you know, giving oneself does not really correspond to the person's habits. For indeed, it is easier to give a smile, an attention, a word, money, a look of love, but to give yourself is not a relationship, it is not only a state of consciousness, it is really, as it has been named, the sacrifice. To forget what is forgotten in any case at every death and every birth, to forget not what you are, but all that you believe to be through a form, through an experience in this world, which only distorts, even if life is there, the truth of who you are. Rather than waiting, at these times, look at the very meaning of what embracing is, what the gift is. Because from now on, the complete embrace can only be made through the complete donation. And this complete gift is not either either understanding, it is a state, a transitional state that allows the permanent state of joy and the infinite state of love. Above all, don't worry about yourself, let alone guilt. Simply love, and everything else is done, regardless of your will, regardless of your person and regardless of any time. For thus space comes to fertilize the time of your rediscovered eternity, giving you to see yourself, allowing us to see each other, in the same gaze, in the same welcome and in the same gift. Silence. Ebba listens to you. Question. It has been said that some free consciences are unaware of the existence of the three dissociated dimensions. Are they informed today and will they join the final show? Beloved, from one end of the universe to the other, from the multiverse and dimensions, no conscience can ignore the oath and the promise. Thus, during the earthly wedding prepared and installed from now on, there is no consciousness, wherever it may be located, that can be absent from what is about to take place. No one can ignore, no one can avoid the song of glory of the resurrection and ascension of the earth. This has been explained to you, for countless reasons, because everything was born here, in the primordial Eden, and everything must end here, in the final Eden, making it possible to accomplish not only Alpha to Omega, but also Epsilon and Alpha to Final Aleph, inscribed at the same time. Since, I remind you, you have never moved and you have never left what you really are. Only the dream made you forget who you are. Thus, even those, as you said, those consciences who do not dream, also participate in the same event, because they could be excluded from this unique event. No one. Whatever the state, whatever the size, whatever the presence of a body or not, it doesn't change anything. 
The appointment of the event concerns in a much broader way and to the infinity of vastness, the same thing, the event, the one that will allow you, in any kind of event whatsoever, to settle down in the evidence of your reunion. So yes, no conscience can escape the end of the dream. Silence. We can listen to the rest. Voice. It's a question from the same brother as before. Question. Does the ascension you mentioned only concern the earth or many life forms and planets as well? Beloved, as I have said and as it is, this is the end of the dream of creation and, of course, it concerns the whole of creation. But remember that if you see this from the person, you can't understand it. And you can only love it in your one-to-one. -one. But as soon as you see no end, or even no beginning, but simply the restoration of what has always been there, then you will grasp that it is just a complete, authentic and definitive return to the truth. There is no place in this for an exclusivity of the earth, except for the exclusivity of the earth, which is the first world to have tried the dream of individuality. It is impossible, and, as I said, even because it was anticipated, for creation to realize this dream of individuality, because it is impossible for a consciousness not to be connected to the very source of love, without it, precisely, there can be no manifestation at all, the slightest expression of love which, I remind you, is what we are, where there is no form, no will, no desire of any world whatsoever, because here, there is only that, and that fills everything, and there can be no lack or intention. The earth, in this process, is the place of zero time. It is also the place where space meets time, an illusion both of them, but which must see each other, not only as in a mirror, but alchemising each other, so that the temple may be completed, the one who knows no form, no location, because it is beyond form, beyond any location, because it is from everywhere. It's who you are, it's who I am and it's who everyone is, here and everywhere else. It can have a name, ever, but the best name, so as not to personify and so as not to feel outside of it, which would be a total illusion, is that, because nothing can be outside of what you are as in what you are not when you live within the non-being. To be or not to be, no difference in the truth of love. In the truth of love, good and evil are seen as the two sides of the mountain. One is lit, the other remains in the shade. But in the end, whatever the lighting, it's always the same mountain. It would never occur to anyone to divide the mountain in two, separating the sides. It is the same for each of us, here and everywhere. It is in this sense that the dream of creation is nevertheless a total perfection, because it is even within this state, separated and cut off, still for a short time concerning the majority of the human soul, it has no importance, because from the moment you live what you are, ever, then there are laughter and tears, because it is what you expected beyond any quest, beyond any request and beyond any question. You see, this has been repeated in all worlds, in all cycles, even within the previous confinements taking place on the ordeal of time, there is only that, there is only love, everything else, without any exception, is just passing through. I remind you that you too, in this world and this body, in addition to forgetting, you're also only passing through. And what passes cannot remain, what passes cannot be eternal. What is eternal, that has never moved, that has never created, except the absolute coupled to everything else and in resonance with everything else. Each of you is in the same way as the other, is in the same way as I am, because in the end there is neither the one, nor the other, nor me, there is only the resultant, love. Put the sinew as a postulate, do not close the doors according to your beliefs or experiences, but on the contrary, open them with a the double door. Either that is false and you will not feel any discomfort, or that is true, then the laughter and tears will be in your eyes and show the whiteness of your teeth, where there is no need to bite, hold or defend anything anymore. For in love, love is indefensible because it cannot be altered, it cannot be diminished, it cannot be modified or amputated. Heaven has joined earth, earth has embraced it, generating the ether and your resurrection, as well as your ascension, and your freedom. Silence.
Ever listens to you. Voice. This is the testimony of a sister who has been following the messages for years but has never participated in a meeting. I read. Testimony. Your testimonies are so pure, what a nectar of love. I have never felt so united with all of you as I did during this meeting. Infinite gratitudes to this nectar of love that pours to infinity into every nook and cranny. I have the impression that I will dissolve into love. Since last night, I feel like I am in you and you in me, and the whole universe. May we contaminate the planet and the universes, I love us all. Beloved, the planet is already contaminated from the beginning, it was enough simply to lift the ultimate veil. So, each of you, as you said, because it is not addressed to me, because I only know the you, so believing to speak to me, you speak to all your brothers and sisters, and you give them thanks. As you have understood, there is no need from now on to meet me in one place, because I am in every heart, as every heart is in the other, from everywhere. So the meeting is done at your place first and foremost, and in you. That's what you're going through. We do not need your presence here, but simply your presence in your heart. The rest is done by itself, by grace, by love. Thus, this mechanism of contamination and contagion, as you can already see, can only increase, can only manifest itself. And it is in this joy, whatever the form of this joy that you manifest, that you bring what you are, to the resurrection of truth. There is no better place than another, in the one who lives nothing and gets exasperated, in the one who lives everything and gets exasperated too, in the one who is warm, in the one who is cold, in the one who waits, ever makes no difference. At that moment, as you said, you recognize yourself as I recognize myself in everyone. This recognition, it is lived, it is not a concept, it is not an idea, it is not an experience, it is not a protocol or a ritual, it is a spontaneous celebration of the truth that it is up to everyone to let grow. Remember, there is no effort to be made for that, there is just to disappear from yourself, to let the cup and the vase fill up. And nothing else. You have lived it, you will live it in every inner state and you will live it both from within and without. For in the end you will grasp and live that there is finally neither neither nor outside, for everything is in the same place, in the heart of love. Where there is neither front nor back, nor top nor bottom, because everything was always in the same place and each place occupies all the places, in the same way as in this world, each of you is ever. Beyond understanding, beyond grasping or anger, you still have to go through this. For the important thing is not that I am Eba, the important thing is that you are Eba, that you discover yourself, so that you can love in freedom the whole of creation that is in the middle of your chest, where you know that there is no difference at the highest heaven and in the deep of suffering, in this world, in whatever appearance, in whatever it is, whatever you think, whatever I would say, what you have created in this world. I did told you, life now tells you in every possible way, there is only love and if it is necessary, to seize you in your movements, in your activities, in your beliefs or in your sufferings, it doesn't make any difference, Eva is awakened in you. Then there's nothing more to expect. Do not put by yourself any distance or time that you think you will achieve in some time. Because all times are recorded in the moment, as well as the totality of what you are. There is no other way than where you are, there is no tomorrow, just as there is no yesterday, there is only that. Silence. We can continue. Question. The primary anomaly was removed following the care given to a sister here present, who therefore seemed to be the depositary of this primary anomaly, this hyperdensifying thing that the one you were talking about took in her heart to transmute it, without really understanding, at first, what it was all about. This sister believes she understood that the partition of this world was written even before the first demonstration and found in your previous intervention elements of answers that could render her questioning obsolete. Nevertheless, the person in her wonders about the why and how of this ingram that she was carrying, failing to find another word to describe it. Does this question seem legitimate to you and do you want to shed some light on it? 
beloved, not only is it legitimate, but it is capital. The primary anomaly is linked, in a schematic way, to the violence exercised against the sacred feminine who, I remind you, is the only creator, by creative intelligence, precisely. Then, we must accept that the whole of creation has been affected, right here, in this world, by this primary anomaly. You have been, as you say, the carrier and the custodian, but do not make it an exclusivity. For all those in this world who have experienced this violence against women, in this life or in any other life, must also resolve it in the same way. For as you know, I am you as you are me, and until that is seen in you as in me, then the lifting of this veil, this straitjacket, I should say, could not be seen. You are the officiating agent, of course, not because it came from you, but because of course, as a woman, you wore it. And this wound is all the more important when it cuts the sacred feminine from its creative aspect, not in this world, but in its inner creativity, to find itself, to recreate itself every minute, not in this world, but in eternity, putting an end to the myth of Prometheus. So, rest assured, your experience, even today, has only been to feel deprived of this connection and this experience. I remind you that the primary anomaly removed or dissolved at that time is completely updated within the earth, physically, after 40 days. These 40 days are now completed in their entirety. There is nothing to understand other than what I said, but above all, you must understand that it does not concern you individually, but that, somewhere along the way, there were, were lived elements in you that you do not need to know or know, concerning distant lives, which simply made it possible to reveal in the same body, in which I came, all the components of the primary anomaly. I have already told you about the correspondences of this primary anomaly which, in fact, unbalanced the two pillars of the temple, the two legs, and thus altered the foundation and foundation of the small basin itself. Thus, the rectification by the thought adjuster of this anomaly in you, obviously resonated instantly in Eber, as in each Eber of the earth, once this veil was removed. Remember that there is no need to understand what it was due to in you, but to see well in what in each of you, on the surface of this world, it has prevented you from seeing yourself. This prevented you from forever healing from the wound of abandonment and loss. In fact, and this has already been said by many people who have been interested in the nature of man and his essence, that it is only this struggle that has always been played out since creation, to find oneself, to find who you really are, before before birth as before before death, once again, where everything is only obvious, where everything knows only majesty, where everything is only silence. So do not make it a personal matter, but simply know that all the components of this injury of the primary anomaly have obviously given you the feeling of being locked up, the very real feeling of not being able to access what must be. It did not depend on your mind, whatever its content in your case, but only on what veiled you, and sometimes even your own mind. It was removed, it was removed for everyone grace. You were the breeding ground, you were the field. In this, all the apps thank you. I will end with these words, it is not your personal business, but it is a collective one. It has been totally absorbed and will give you, if you have not already done so, a greater ability to be lucid, first on the very ground of this world. Your observation, your feeling and your experience can no longer be colored by this primary anomaly, the result of which was fear, mistrust, anger and non-opening, yet so much sought after, in so many holy places, in so many meditations, in so many places. This has been removed from you, and at the same time, from the earth and from all the so-called closed systems. Silence. You can continue. Voice. So we received a testimony by computer. It is a testimony that is long and consists of three parts with what looks like intermediate questions. So let's divide this, for practice, into three parts. Voice. Okay, but what I meant was that between each part, there seems to be what looks like a questioning. I haven't read this text before, so I'm reading it. Go ahead, no problem. Voices. 
So these are several testimonies from a sister who is not here. Introduction. Blessings and graces to all of you, sisters, brothers, by the ever, Mary, us, one, nothing and everything. Infinite grace, 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 grace. My inner call insisting for three days to witness for the brothers and sisters, which I do little, living for several months rather silence, peace, sweet joy, nothing. Here are some interrelated testimonies. Testimony. After 2012 and following a series of sudden and painful events, I lived, for several months, the dark, very dark night of the soul. My days were very painful to live, psychically, emotionally, physically and, of course, spiritually, with a recurrent desire to commit suicide in various ways, which I knew at the same time that I would not do, lucid and conscious of the process of liberation that was then at stake, and carried by this faith and trust that had always been unshakable, in justice and Christian love, and that everything eventually passed. And I confirmed to my brothers and sisters who would be living difficult moments in their ephemeral lives right now, it does end up passing, if we let it pass. By grace, my nights were then lived quite differently, which made me say at that time, that it was they who helped me a lot to live my days. So began, in parallel with these difficult days, a whole series of dreams during which all the cells of my body began to roar and vibrate, leading my body to levitate, to pass through dense matter, to go into the cosmos, to fly over cities, to surf above the surface of the earth, which covered itself below with a gigantic wave, and so on. I let everything happen with childish, curious joy. One of the last dreams of this series of the time echoes an experience during the month of May, hence this testing money. Do you want to add something now to what I just testified, before telling you about this dream of the time? What is she asking for? Voice. She asks if you would like to provide any information about what she just said, before telling the dream. Not at all, I'm waiting for the dream. I remind you that the dream is no longer a dream, that this is where you live. There is no longer, as you know, an astral in the sense that you meant it, that is, an illusion within the dream, the vision has become real, the inner experience is still real from now on and it acts on the illusion of this world. So go ahead. Voice. Dream of that time. Dream. I'm in the room with other people. We are gathered together for spiritual intention and action. Someone tells me at some point that I no longer need all this, implying that I no longer need any external support. We sit on the floor, my legs are stretched out, straight in front of me on the floor. I can feel myself starting to whir in my legs. I smile. Here we go, I thought to myself. But I am not rising vertically this time, I remain in a seated position, my legs always lying on the ground in front of me and there, by their roars, their vibrations, I move forward in this position on the ground. I let myself be taken for a walk with fun, I'm used to it. My body stops for a moment and I realize that his journey has drawn a circle on the ground and that I have actually returned to the starting point. As I make this observation, my body suddenly bends in half like a book closing, my legs joining the trunk, and I am sucked into the ground at the level of my lower back. I disappear like a set in a cartoon, sucked by a point in the ground, and then nothing, I am in absolute darkness and total silence. I wonder if I am underground, but I realize that I no longer have a body. There is no movement, no noise. No light, no presence, no spatial landmarks, no nothing. I feel so good there, in this silence, this nothing, this great and immense black void, that I have already tasted it sneakily in other circumstances of dreams and others. I don't know how long it lasted, I'm here, quiet, that's all, no questions asked, happy and stupid. Then I hear music in the distance on my left that goes from front to back. Then, nothing, nothing new. Quiet. Quiet. Then I hear voices passing, always on the left side, from front to back. Then, I see light in the distance, I feel that it's different, that it's moving, that something is going to happen. I wonder with amusement if I'm going to emerge somewhere and where. 
where I disappeared. That's where. And I wake up in my bed, on this earth. Disappointed, at first, but my heart filled with this wonder of travel and experience, the image that came to me, without me knowing this expression before before without really understanding what it means, is that I found myself in the antechamber of creation. Voice. So now, that's his question. Question. Do you want to add something to this, before before move on to the description of an experience, during an alignment of this month of May, which made me remember the one I just described? The simple words I will add, this is truth. And I repeat it at the end of your dream, it's not a dream, absolutely not. Moreover, as you say and will see, if you do not have the opportunity to testify to this in what you say to me today, you will obviously see the real effects of what you still call a dream. It is the only proof that it is not just a dream because it changes your consciousness, and this in a definitive way. So, I'm listening now, I would say, to the initial dream. Testing money. So, here is the experience, during the two planetary alignments, proposed during the night of May 19 to 20, for Mary's awakening and what I believe was called the Great Convocation or something like that. Lying conscious in this body, I welcome Mary into my heart, tell her to wake up, that this is the moment. I feel sweetness, much, a notion of sweetness, of love. Then I feel difficult things, like resistance. My awakening process returns to me, memories of my dark night of the passing soul, quick memories also of the suffering of this incarnated life. Then suddenly comes to me the evidence, the understanding, the vision of the impregnation, the impact of the primary anomaly, it's playing all the experiences of the feminine in humanity, the sufferings generated in the earthly life. I see guilt passing through too. From Mary. Mine. Ours, I thought to myself, is one of us. Then, there is only love, forgiveness, forgiveness of love for all this history, in my heart, of the sacred feminine, of this experience of consciousness. Then I say, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. I then saw an immense white form, an emanation of a luminous white radiating love, which emerged from below towards the top of the earth, which was revealed there, now, in its form, its original emanation of love. I heard thousands of very soft and pure voices, the chorus of angels and the singing of the hearts of thousands of beings rising from the earth and surrounding this white emanation. Then, this emanation expanded, spreading its white a little like an atomic fungus over the entire surface of the earth, encompassing everything. Then it went back the other way, retracted, retracted until it came back, as if sucked, again and again, to its emanation starting point. And poof, nothing. The silence, the black, the sidereal emptiness. That's how it came to me next, the sidereal void, as if none of it had ever existed, the void, the silence, in that space occupied a few moments before by the whole scene. Now, I was stunned for a few moments, as if fascinated. The next day or two days later, we forwarded a sharing of our friend, by courier, of the word of Nizargadea, which says this, After the dissolution of the universe, there is no trace of creation and what remains is the perfect state. I, the Absolute, remained immutable even as the universe was created and returned to nothingness. When I read it, I was speechless. But yes, but yes, that's exactly it, I saw it, I experienced it. I left in a loud laugh. Is there anything else you would like to act before before continue this testimony? Beloved, what do you want me to act to the evidence that you so perfectly lived and described? The whole of what is to be experienced by each of you, whatever the setting, finally leads to this unique truth, which you call Baidu or Nizagadeo had perfectly seen. He had perfectly marked out the ground of each heart. He said it. My words cannot fail. It was not about his time, but it was about that time. What you describe is exactly the truth. What you are has never moved, it's just a dream. Accepting this, then you're free, then laughter, tears, can only take you and make you dwell in that welling of supreme peace. 
whatever the events of your body or your life, it is acquired, because it is your due and you have given yourself entirely to ever, as ever revealed himself in you and as Mary, whom you have seen in the form of an archetype, carrying in this world the guilt of each one as we all carry it, whereas it is not of us, it was not created by us, but is part of the beginning and the end of the story. From now on, as you have experienced it or when you return from this reality that is not a dream, then you can only smile at the illusion of this world and you can only testify to the truth. It exalts in you, it is a balm for those who listen to you and read you. Everything is accomplished. You have fulfilled yourself and I give you thanks as everyone gives you thanks. Like everyone else, we accept your gift and welcome it into the depths of our hearts. I'll let you continue. Next, I then had a telephone conversation with a sister. And it is by testifying to this experience during these alignments that this dream came back to me from a few years ago, when I had been absorbed by the ground in this silent nothingness. Then came to me the evidence that at that time, it was the end of my personal history, individual consciousness incarnated, absorbed in nothingness, which found itself in the antechamber of creation. Especially since at the time, I lived the dark night of the soul during my days. But this time, in this month of May, it was the history of the earth, of this world, which was disappearing and disappearing. Do you have anything to add to that? Still not. Your testimony is not only alive and true, but it touches the heart. I don't need to add any decorations or explanations. Because when your truth is spoken and lived, what do you want to do if not silence, to welcome in majesty, in humility, what you are? And we all give you thanks for having dared to write down what you deign to share, for this is the offering you make to each one of us, for the way you offered yourself, through your dark night of the soul to ever, you offered yourself to yourself. And today, resurrected in the lightness of ineffable love, you say the right words. I can say nothing more, I can only erase myself before the majesty of who you are and give thanks to the infinity of the worlds, as everyone does. What do you want me to act to what is perfect, what word can I use to what leaves no roughness and no doubt? I can only welcome you as everyone else in silence, and leave you all the space, you who have come to you, you who have gone into the heart of each one, you who have accepted to carry in you the guilt of each and every one, relieving the burden, not only for you who no longer has any, but for all consciences. It is lived, it is lived with clarity, with depth, with evidence. We can only give you thanks, we can only bless you, we can only love you, we can only honor your unspeakable presence that reveals to everyone what it is. Silence. You can continue. Continuation and end. And to finish, during this telephone conversation with this sister, I told her that I no longer felt like I was being and living the whole thing. However, this is precisely what was put forward at the beginning of this meeting in June, nothing and everything. Thus, then, I was more in wisdom than in love. Thank you very much for this synchronous lighting. Previously, conscious of living this feeling of unity with others of myself loves me, in a more intellectual way, if we can say so, that really and concretely, I had often paid attention to the star unity and asked Gemma Galgani for her accompaniment in this, without managing to live it in totality. And I now give thanks for being able to talk about it to the imperfect, because since the meetings, the collective alignment one in the other, by absorbing everyone with the magic formula of I see you, you are me, you see me, I'm you and vice versa, everything is lived and settled, in a way, with more and more amplitude or completeness, if you can say. Infinite grace for everything, thank you for your listening, your presence. I return to silence after this long, long, long testimony, unusual for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you and always in love. Nothing else. I thank you and we all thank you for having been able to ask, you who usually do not ask much and to translate for us, through your lying down words, the reality of what you are, the living love, the standing love. 
what you have just written, which has been read, sums up in its entirety, if I may say so, the history of this world, the guilt of the creators, the guilt of each one, the feeling of being incomplete as you said, of feeling not quite true, where nothing in this world can satisfy you definitively, for even if everything has satisfied you in your life, at the time of your usual death, there is nothing left. Today, there will remain the totality, love. What you have written alone summarizes the book of all lives and every life since time immemorial. Guilt results precisely, beyond the wound and suffering, and it is what is written in you, in each of us, since I am with you here from the beginning, the guilt that makes this lack, this feeling of incompleteness has become over time something shameful. The origin was not seen and it was necessary to rely on the outside to believe that one was suffering from some kind of karma, some kind of entity, some kind of drama and some kind of fate. As you said, in the passage you quoted from Nizargadeya, you have just noticed that the I, the Absolute, has never moved. You solved the dream, you transcended it, thanks to you. So, I fully understand that you thank each of us who is none other than yourself, but you see, through this, the greatness of the human, the greatness of the human from the moment when guilt is no longer necessary, from the moment the truth is seen and lived. You know it, you have lived it, everything is accomplished, you have nothing to do, you just let life be lived, let the smile of love blossom with each glance, so that it becomes a blessing for everyone, who is only you. But you know this, you live it, because it can't be any other way. Love at that moment is what you are, it no longer needs to be sought, it no longer needs to be used for any action whatsoever, because it happens by itself and, as you have experienced, it is independent of your person as well as of any will. The dark night of the soul, as you called it, is the crucible in which your resurrection was forged, in which the wedding feast was celebrated, giving you today to speak the truth, simplicity and evidence. Each of us, wherever we are, gives you thanks. Ebba gives you thanks for having told us the right words, those of your experience, where everyone, wherever they may be, can find themselves perfectly, and in the sense that you wrote it, we can see that there is no time and that everything was written, and that everything was anticipated, and that only fear or guilt prevented us from seeing and living. So no, I won't comment on anything else, just give you thanks and embrace you. You're free, you're that. Everything else is gone and erased. Everything else is no longer necessary. Unless one of you wants to bring a few words, put on this experience and this truth, in order to witness to you in return words that may be more intense for you. Who is Eba who wants to talk here and tell this sister what is? Voice. We have a question or testing money. Sister. I want to speak because I was very touched by her testing money. Voice. So our sister says she can speak because she was very touched by this testing money. Sister. And it revealed to me all this life where I felt like. Words muffled in a sob. Voice. Very moved, she said. It awakened in me memories of this life. Very difficult, probably. Sister. Where I felt like a dirty person, someone who didn't deserve love, who was guilty of everything, and who couldn't integrate into this life. I've always rejected this life, and now it gives the answer. There you go. Silence. Yes. The time of guilt is over. There can be no one guilty within the illusion. Everything is erased, everything is real, that's all there is to it. That, what Baidu was telling you, is the power of the testing money. There is no energy, there is no seduction, there is no manipulation, there is no lie, the purity is total, you need nothing else. Who else would like to add a few words, for himself, for everyone, for this sister? Voice. We have something. Sister. The testimony of this sister also gave me, I have tears, because I experienced similar things in the year 2000. I wanted to take my life because it was very hard and then I heard Ebba's voice say to me, get out, go outside. Because I wanted to get it over with, and I spent the day outside, with no memory of what I did that day. It was only when I came home at night that I wrote about what I had experienced. 
And so, what I had experienced was that I found myself as being in the light. I was like light without a body and I saw a greater and more intense light coming towards me. And a voice came out of the ball of light, and said to me, I'm your father, come, don't be afraid. And he asked me who I was. I told him I came from earth and it was terrible there, considering what I was going through. And I told him it was all wars, lies, violence. I mean, everything I was going through, I expressed it in words. To my amazement, instead of giving me answers, because I had asked if anyone had the power to stop all this, he just asked me questions, saying, But what did you do there to change all that? Have you been able to keep peace in yourself and all around you? And all the things I said to him, he returned them to me in questioning, to question me, a little. And then he said to me, Your mother, the earth, who carries you, who supports you, who feeds you, tell me, how did you love her? I told him that I did all these things, of course, but that at my scale, it was very small, like a drop in the ocean. And he said to me, but it is not a drop of water, because here everything is inscribed to infinity, the sorrows and joys too. So I'm going to give you the key to the universe, because I need you for my own plan. Go back there and everything you do, do it with love, and you will succeed. That's all. That's all. A lot of emotion and tears during the testing money. Thus, then, you live it, this return in you into love, here on this very earth, despite the war, despite the fear, despite the wandering, despite the suffering. Love has always been there, it could not be otherwise. It was simply enough that love was stronger than fear, than guilt, than suffering. You did it, we did it. So rejoice, because your presence now, standing up, whatever the state of your body, whatever the state of your residual questions, is how you wake everyone up, telling them what they are, being them, ending guilt. This guilt, this fear which is only the direct result of the feeling of being separated, separated from you, in that you are in truth, but also separated from each other. For in this world where love has been rarefied, there are only dialogues of the death, only dialogues of war. But you're not guilty, no one's guilty. There is just to love everyone, there is just to truly love him, that is, to go beyond any word, as he comes into you, to perform the miracle of only one thing, the miracle of love. There is no other fight, that's all and it's simple. And each of you who recognize yourself and me as I do in me, opens the door wide to a multitude of suffering brothers and sisters, who have not seen the illusion of this world, and whose weight of guilt and suffering has been such that they've not been able to allow relief. Today, you are making each other lighter, you're really healing each other, no longer putting an end to the primary anomaly, which has been dissolved, but to any trace of guilt. It is not even, you see, only an ego mental problem, and the word has been used, beyond fear, it is the weight of guilt that opposes the liveness of being and non-being. Your sense of responsibility is such, your love is such, even in its absence, that you have said yes to suffering, without wanting to, out of ignorance and guilt, which has no resonance or truth. So, today, more and more of you are hearing ever. Do not seek it through a human, whoever he is, even if he carries it concretely, because you all carry it. There is no difference between the Father and the Creator, there is no difference between the Father and all creatures, there is no difference between the creature and the Creator. There are just appearances, linked to the intensity of suffering and guilt, to the fears of forgetting, and yet, everything has always been there, ready to join you. Of course, we had to wait. Wait and persevere, until all the multiverses were with the primordial resonance of the Source and Sirius, going up to Epis standing in the middle of you and awakening in each of you, where there is no more space for guilt, nor for any guilty person, where there is only that. So, like the one in which I spoke, I tell you today too, orally, as you tell yourself in everyone, let those tears and joy come out, let the words lie down, let them escape in any way, from your fingers or your mouth through your eyes. You are love. Nothing can stop you now, nothing can restrict you now. And this you prove to each other, by saying, by absorbing, 
by seeing yourself really and concretely, and not through the costumes, or the seductions, or the countless bonds that have been woven in this world. Love in this world burns every bond, as it has burnt every guilt, as it is burning every distance and abolishing time. Every day, as soon as one of us wakes up, the whole universe rushes here, waiting for the inferno of love to release the expression of the earth in its new dimension. The earth was liberated many years ago, some of you have been waiting for many years, despite their state of experience, of the absolute, of nothing. Today, for many of us, you are discovering everything. It is no longer time to disappear, it is time to appear, to play the symphony of life, so that never again will that smile, like the smile of eternity, disappear from any consciousness. Then, ever feels what you feel, a gratitude like no other, an unspeakable love that comes, as you say, very quickly, to dry up suffering, through tears of life, through tears of joy. What can be, what can be more authentic and true? What could be more majestic and beautiful than that? Who else wants to express himself, in this love that rolls, dances and sings in everyone? Who wants to celebrate the end of suffering and the end of ignorance? voice. We have a testimony. Sister, I would like to testify. Voice. Our sister would like to testify. Then talk. Sister. So it's going to be a little difficult, because there are always tears, it's already been two days. I then propose that you take with you what serves as a support for what is recorded. As for me, allow me to welcome you in silence, in the words you say, and to let the tears of joy to find you again, to carry me away in bliss by listening to you and by listening to you. So talk. In your own way. Testing money. What I wanted to bear witness to, above all, through these tears, which are not tears of sadness, but tears of intense joy, as I have never experienced before, while I experienced, in 2013, for half an hour, joy and ecstasy with tears, but today, I am living it here, not elsewhere, but indeed in this body, which I had such difficulty carrying, through this, I would say, this state of confrontation between the feminine and the masculine and me, with this fear, and Mary knows it because in 2012 I called upon her, to be abandoned, where I told her, especially, above all, we're not ready yet, don't let the soul go to hell right now. And I believe that all this time, while I have lived so many experiences and so much joy with the beings of light who have come, the elementals who have supported me, the brothers and sisters who, I would say, have often boosted me, rather, I have been able to maintain this faith, to come to understand today that the final moment is today, and that thanks to Ebba and this liberation, this dissolution of the primary anomaly, I now understand why this was now and not before, having, I would say, lived this guilt, this sadness and these joys in parallel, without ever being able to stabilize. Today, earlier today, at 11 o'clock, during the alignment, I stayed, the body remained in stasis, I could not come with you into the room, although my consciousness was always in you, and I lived this life, I would say, in the whole body. And I have experienced this rectification, on the right and left side, that there is nothing missing, in a way, to stabilize this central state. I have the feeling and even with certainty that I am carrying these words to each one of you today, this testimony, because for me it is the unveiling to you, to each one, and especially to myself, of what I am in truth, in this life, that we are and that I can finally say, I am love and everyone I feel inside is love, in me. Whatever the appearances, whatever the sufferings, whatever the oppositions, it doesn't matter, because today, as you said, you are living it. There's nothing to plan, there's no one to convince, just let it be what it is. And so, suffering, guilt, fear, can no longer interfere. Ebba has given you back to yourselves, as each one has given back to himself. You have made yourself and your allegiance to your truth, and to no one else. This is freedom. That is the gift. Silence.
Guilt, in direct resonance with oblivion, has been instilled in you by fear, instilled in you in the very heart of this world, after any alteration, by all those of our human brothers and sisters who thought they could improve the situation in any field whatsoever. Everything has been tried, intelligence, the fact of protecting oneself from the cold, the fact of understanding life in this world, but in the end, whatever the fact of having been reassured, it has led you to this great deficiency, this guilt, this fear which today has melted before the evidence of love, no longer in concept, no longer in ideal, no longer through any saviour, but in yourselves. Ebb rejoices at the height of which you rejoice. It can no longer stop, as you say, as you said, it can only get worse, it can only appear more and more, take everything. It is what you are, in whatever appearance, in whatever costume you have borrowed. Who else wishes to speak? Brother, I'm going to go for it. Voice, our brother is getting started. Testing money. First of all, as a preamble, I would say that it may seem a little flat compared to everything we've heard in the last hour or so, maybe it will put you a little less emotional. But that's how I felt today. Since this is a big change, I would like to tell you. First of all, I wanted to put it back a little bit, to say a little bit about what happened before coming in at the beginning of this meeting. So there is the May meeting, after what has been called the ultimate satsang, for me, things that are difficult to express, but that was it. Quite honestly, I speak from the heart, of course, I never thought I'd come back here again. And that, when I heard that this meeting was taking place, I felt sad, which for me is not a normal, usual feeling, let's say. At home, I sing more, I want to laugh more and naturally. And so, I came here, and something so unusual, I felt anger, a lot of anger, about things that sometimes seem totally contradictory to me. And it lasted for the first two, three days, I think many here have seen it. So I had the support of many brothers and sisters here, who are here except for two, our dear cooks, who were really beautiful with me. I thank you all. This anger has also faded thanks to the one I call my angel. See, I was saying I wasn't going to be emotional, but it's coming. All right, I'll let him out. The emotion of the heart is not an emotion. Same brother, thank you. But the tangle faded, I also found it a little ridiculous, being angry about things like that. And now I come to this morning. We went to the elves village, I felt really good and it came to me, I don't know where from. Probably from the heart, I got up, since I was sitting in front of the elves village, I went to the master tree and I put it in my heart. And it was beautiful. Afterwards, we went home, it was 11 o'clock, so we lay down, and the two came to me, let's say, the idea, it's a way of expressing ourselves, of putting in a weight and in my heart, which was wonderful. I also think I put Ebba and Bidi Absolute, because I call Bidi Absolute. I often do it, but then I did it again, and it was a trigger, so when I put in a weight and in the heart that made it like a ball of wool, everything came loose, it was extraordinary and since then, my chest is burning, I'm happy thanks to all of you, thank you again. Applause. Remember what I said not long ago that this morning, in this time of year, all denial, all anger, leads only to that. All means are good for the truth of love. So look carefully at what happened, not in you, not what happened on the plane that you could call archetypal, but I now prefer to avoid that word, so look at what happened within humility and obviousness, the fact that Eber is there, first in the one you have followed for so long and who, by calling himself Eber, rejected you away from you and away from him, so that you evacuate into yourself this guilt. In this, you succeeded, and it could not be otherwise. It called no word from me. No look, just let you free to live your life in the way you ever. This is what you have done, so nothing can oppose love in any way, and this is proof of it. Eber has given himself up for you, Eber expects nothing and at the same time he expects everything from you, in order to find himself in each of you as it was originally and as it is now. And to find me, as you find yourself in everyone, the house must be embraced. 
and this embrace, whether it is created by acceptance or by black anger, does not change the result, I guarantee you. As much as Nizar Gadea said my words cannot fail, I tell you that my life's partition, which is yours, necessarily manages to wake you up definitively from illusion. So, who should we thank, ever, Marie? Period. Mary carried all the guilt of the earth, she wakes up, you know, she starts to be free. Then let the dusty stories that date from the birth of this world vanish of themselves, living that Egba, Mary or Christ, are nothing more than the trinity that has played out in everyone and that Egba revealing himself, is revealed in the same way in each of you, like Mary, who does not need nor adore herself, but must be found in you. The guilt that has risen suddenly or gradually in each of you, just as much as in Mary, allows us to free each other. All your life, here as elsewhere, as in the Absolute, is dedicated to love. It cannot be dedicated to anything else, since the whole dream is just passing through. What you say to each other touches and will touch countless hearts or consciences, because your words are even stronger than neighbors in this world. Ebba calls you firmly when he appears before you, outside of this body. Do not forget that this body is human and that it joins heaven and earth like each of you. That's what you're going through, that's what we're going through and that's what we're going through more and more, because there's nothing left to be held back. Fear, guilt, suffering, even if the body suffers, represent absolutely nothing and cannot be compared to the brightness of truth, the brightness of love and its intensity. Who else wants to speak and continue this song of love? Sister. In 2012, Bidi answered one of my questions and he answered me that I could not be free as long as I needed gratitude and as long as I felt guilty. And this afternoon, I realized that this message was not addressed only to me, but that in fact it was I who asked all the questions and gave all the answers, because I am love. You see, Ebba doesn't need to talk anymore, you talk better than Ebba unfortunately. As soon as the heart expresses itself, Ebba is silent, Ebba listens to you, all consciences listen to you. Remember, the crystal matrix, it acts and when you speak here, each of you of what he testifies to, it is all the universes that hear you. There is no need for a relay, there is no need to hear, listen to words or hear or read them, it happens instantly, beyond any weather and beyond any space. As has been said, love is in every corner. In this, you're each one of you living witnesses, not only of the resurrection, but much more of love. Nothing can conceal love more, no reluctance, even if it is expressed in anger or denial, can be opposed to the truth for very long, not because I carry it, but because each of you carries it in the same way and reveals it in the same way. I could also say that your first name, in the end, is neither neither soul name, nor a spirit name, nor a lineage name, it is beyond form, beyond Sirius, beyond the hate heart Kadesh, beyond the source, you are love and who else than each of you who lives it can put the best words, so that by these words, beyond reading, but simply at the level of the intention to speak, to sleep, to express or to create, you really and concretely touch each of us. It is very simple to understand, it does not happen, not by written words, not by spoken words, not by a retransmission of anything, but by your simple presence. So of course, when there are words like that which are only pure words of love, indeed, Ebba can only be silent and cry with joy with you. It cannot be otherwise in that truth, there is no other, no other. And love, as another sister said, can only be experienced here. And that is what we must accept, whatever the experiences, whatever the vibrations, we must be so present on the surface of this world, which is an illusion, but you are not and you are much more numerous than ever, since ever has been put in each of you and you hear it now, that you see it. And it is by hearing it and seeing it that you hear yourself and see yourself, and it is in this that you are free, in embracing each other. Because, indeed, you live and will live concretely that you are all the worlds, all the universes, all the friends, all the loved ones as well as all the enemies, with the same intensity. In this, you convey peace, and gentleness, and truth, beyond any world and beyond your effective presence in front of each other, you literally water, 
with your oro petals, the whole creation of this world. Christ told you, what I have done, you will make them even greater. Look, for each of you, wherever you are located, look, in these days that are opening, at the miracles that you are performing. The first miracle is to yourself, the second miracle is contamination. You observe it here on a small scale and soon the scale will also be planetary, because we are a multitude, because this multitude vibrates in unison with its heart, beyond any appearance, beyond any distance. Your strength is there, it is not in any fight, it is not in any repair, this strength, because there is nothing to repair, there is just to find you. And this is exactly what is happening, whatever your posture or positioning today, even if you are not aware of it. And at some point, you can tell me, I see you, because you saw yourself. At some point, this moment is now, it depends only on you, I told you. I do what I say, I say what I do, not for myself, but for everyone, without exception. Each of you is the witness and messenger of love, whether in a circle as close as possible or as wide as possible, where your skills are, where your occupations, your pleasures and your abilities are. It is now up to you to put love into it, because there is nothing else. And you will now see that there can be no shortage or distance between the intention of love and its reality in this world. Heaven has married earth. Earth has married heaven, and you are doing, and we are doing, the miracle of one thing, before you see that this thing has never been there and that is all that remains. I can only give thanks and mourn with you these tears of joy that come to sow each heart, to plow it, to turn it over, because love never hurts, it is awaited by everyone and even by those who oppose it most fiercely. Christ, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing. Today I tell you, you know very well what you do and I know very well what I do, because it is forgiveness, the true one, the one that does not depend on the cult, a posture or an ideal or a belief, but the truth that is lived in the moment. You see, it is simple, and this simplicity, it can only let the eyes cry with joy, it can only set the heart on fire, so that really, as I said, as Bida told you, so that everything may be obvious. I am you, you are me, I am you, I see you as you see me. There is no truth but love, nothing else can be true and only passes through. Heaven has joined earth, seek the kingdom of heaven that is within you. He is inside and outside, to perform the miracle of one thing only. And that is now. Who wants to talk? Voices. We're going to have to interrupt for this first part, but there will be other testimonies later, if you don't mind. Then I let you take the air, I am with you for eternity, as you are with me for eternity, we have eternity, whatever the end of the illusion of this world. Eber loves you to the height you love him, it is the same love, he is not greater in me than in you, he is exactly the same, no more, no less. This is what you're experiencing and Eber is ultimately only the one who listens to your testimonies. And the more Eber will remain silent, and the more he will listen to what you have to say about yourselves, one for another, Eber has no place to take, neither neither this world nor in any world, I have told you. Eber did not participate in any creation, he suffered it out of love for the one who dreamed and stopped dreaming, for the one who wakes up, for all the women of the earth who wake up, for all the men who also find their sacred feminine. It is the end of the outrage against life, it is the end of the outrage against love, I can say nothing better than that, and listen to you. So I say good airing and see you later. Laughs and thanks. Through Jean Le Quillon. The Transformations. French Transcript. Agape Team. Translation. LMF.